Hi, I'm Vivian the Knitter. And I'm Allison the Crocheter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 60 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn, the knitting and crocheting podcast brought to you by me, Vivian, and my daughter, Allison. I'm coming at you from Virginia. And I'm recording from Scotland. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone, for and thanks for joining us. I, f- I feel like well, our, our last episode came out a little bit late, so this one feels like, well, there's hardly been any time between recording. We just did this, like, a week ago, it feels like. Because <laughs> <laughs> we did just do this a week ago. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone, who uh, is joining us, and for anyone who caught last our last episode, we were celebrating our third year of doing this, so this is the first official, like, now we're into our fourth year yeah we finished three years episodes? now we're going yeah. into our fourth year yes <laughs> that's how time works um <laughs> our three-year pot anniversary anniversary three-year birthday giveaway we have to pick somebody for the giveaway um Yay! yes and we had lots of people who entered who left comments about oh whether they were more allison or vivian and it definitely skewed more vivian <laughs> But we a few did. people got Allison. Yeah, we did get a few Allisons, but definitely more uh, more Vivians. So either oh I'm a weirdo or I'm just <laughs> really special, the good kind. Um, You're a special weirdo. <laughs> so the prizes up for grabs were the two hanks of yarn, one that was like Scottish and one that was Virginian. Yeah. I, yeah in fact, I was looking at it and I almost... <laughs> I I I almost put it with my personal stash and like oh I'm gonna set it aside for this and this like no, no that's not mine <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, mine right now but it's not mine to use <laughs> yeah um and then the KCACY mug which a few people were like where can we buy these and the answer is nowhere nowhere maybe if you if enough people ask maybe but it's super special at the moment so we're Uh gonna pick one winner who is going to get all three of these things now all the stuff yes i've compiled a list of everybody and i have a special formula which throws out a random person's name and at the moment i i'm just clicking this button and it's just like reeling through random people so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna tell (laughs) you have to tell me when to stop and then i'm gonna stop and that'll be the person Oh, is it's that just, what you're doing with your hand? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just like pressing this button, and every time I press it, a, a new random person appears. Stop. But our winner is Motag91. I will, I will say that I was a little bit nervous that it was going to be somebody with a name that I wouldn't know how to pronounce. But sure, I, it's either Motag91 or Motag or Moda G. 91? Okay, actually, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So, congratulations! Congratulations! Are, yeah, you've you've won the giveaway. So, we will get in touch with you um, in case you don't hear this podcast episode right away. And, yeah, thanks everyone else for entering. And Now I have to give up this yarn. So, yeah. <laughs> right, so we've got some special thank yous, some more thank yous, because I'm sure some more people have also discovered the podcast uh, because of our giveaway, which has been nice, but some people who have been listening for a little while and have just said hello on the Ravelry thread. We've got Sarah, who's from Florida, uh, but she's recently just started listening to podcasts generally. Mm-hmm. Um, Laura, who began crocheting last year and has started to knit as well. And I saw some of her projects on Ravelry and pretty impressive for a pretty new crocheter. Probably more impressive than I was at that point. Uh-huh. Um, and then Angela, who is in your knitting group. She's in my knitting group, yes. And she was one of the first people that I met when I joined the knitting group. And she's been listening for two years. So it was kind of funny to run into a listener and a customer. Mm-hmm. So I was pretty a thrilled. A problem plum customer. A problem plum, yes, customer. I was pretty thrilled uh-huh. to meet her. And now she's she's since become a very good friend. Like yeah. a real friend. <laughs> <laughs> and in real life fun. Yeah, nice. in real life. That's pretty cool. Hi, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our BuzzFeed quiz this week, which, as you were saying, nothing is going to live up to <laughs> the one from last week in which no. it was, are you more Allison or Vivian? <laughs> Vivian and Allison. Yeah. But we will persevere. So I, I, I picked this one, and it's, what kind of sushi roll are you? <laughs> mm-hmm, and we both love sushi. I am a dragon roll, which I do love. 
Uh-huh. Uh huh. You like to do things your own way. You stand out from the bunch, and you're a well-respected individual. I don't know about any of that stuff, but I do love a good dragon roll. I think, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. But I also got a dragon roll. Oh, you so. did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are so similar. <laughs> <laughs> um. So there's not too many questions in this one, but uh, <laughs> I was. We we had started our video call while we were taking the quiz, and the first question is, "What color is your hair?" And the four options, none of the colors are the color of our hair. Uh, no. But I just went for the brown one. We do have dark brown hair. Yeah, but it's like it's like really, 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 really dark. <laughs> yeah. It's like it should be. What color do you want your hair to be? I like the rainbow hair. <laughs> Would you ever have rainbow hair, though? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Aspire to rainbow hair. Yeah, but that's like a really pretty pastel rainbow. I do like that. Mm. Somebody had a shawl, like, pretty much in those colors yesterday, and it was, I was, I was in my... It was mostly purple as well, and, you, and, and it's got that teal that you like. Yeah, yep, um, yep. Uh, where Do you prefer to get coffee from Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks? Or not Dunkin' Donuts anymore, just Dunkin'. It's just Dunk, Dunkin', or as we like to call it up in... A New England Dunks. And yeah. my friend Paola will cringe. I prefer to get my coffee from Dunks. I said Starbucks because I, if I was going to sit down, like Starbucks is nicer. Because mm. it's more of a cafe. That's true. I mean, I do like to sit at a Starbucks. That wasn't the Starbucks. question. That wasn't the question. But yeah. It says, where do you get <laughs> Also, you don't get Dunks here, so. Oh, that's right. You don't. Uh, and then your favorite season? That is pretty hard for me because I really do like a lot of the seasons. For, you know, different reasons. A lot of the seasons, you say that as if there's more than four. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like all the seasons. But spring and fall are my favorite. So I had to pick between spring and fall. And I picked fall. Okay, I, yeah, pick I picked fall. fall as well. You did? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we didn't have much of a fall here. In Virginia? Uh, yeah, because just the weather. And uh, it was very hot and until late. But mm-hmm. then I did get um, you know, a little uh, tasting of it when I went up to Maine over, so that was nice. Yeah. I think feel like I took fall for granted in the northeast because it's just like it is exactly the way the pictures are, like with beautiful Post trees cars, and falling yeah. leaves and yeah, and whereas like here you still you get fall weather, right? It gets cooler, you get like a bit of like the leaves they still fall off the trees and change colors, but it's just not <laughs> the same. Because there's not as many is there more like pine trees that way? Or it's just Maybe. less trees because you're in a city. Uh, but I even feel like maybe in the country, it's just not the same. If they Well, it's not like all forests. It's very grassy yeah. and barren in Scotland. Yeah. In some places. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. Okay. Choose a vacation spot. I picked Miami. I picked Martha Vineyard because mm. I was just, I wanted something not in a city. Because mm. the other options were New Orleans and LA. Yeah. I picked but my Emily only because I associate Emily's that with, yeah, Emily. I would have... I think if I had, if I were to pick something else, I would have gone for New Orleans because I've never been there before. Oh, I've never been there either. I've never been to Martha's Vineyard. Mm. I have been to L.A. Not my favorite place, but uh, it's got its. It, it does have its perks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, your preferred color out of pink, blue, red, and orange is totally gonna be blue, isn't it? Yeah. No, I picked orange. No, <laughs> 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 I picked blue. That was a pretty good straight face, but that was definitely a lie. <laughs> yeah, I pick blue. Uh, what did yeah, you I pick? pick blue as well. You pick blue too. Hmm. Yeah. What exactly is yeah. it in, in a dragon roll? There's avocado. I thought. I don't know. Does Does everyone have like a slightly different take on it? I'm not sure, but I thought there was like salmon on top, or is that the rainbow roll? I don't. I, I don't. It, it um, has this... eel sauce on it. Looks uh... like it has eel, cucumber. So this says typically there's shrimp, tempura, and cucumber inside the roll and thinly sliced avocado on top to resemble the scales of a dragon. Uh, well, this does not have shrimp tempura, which I do like a roll with shrimp tempura. Well, I remember like one of the sushi places here in Edinburgh that everyone that like I've been recommended a few times. I finally went to it and the sushi itself was fine. The rice was good, the, the fish was good, but the different types of special rolls they had, I was disappointed because I don't think a single one of the special rolls had just raw fish. Oh. So either it was like maybe there was some tuna in it, but it also had imitation crab or it had salmon in it, but it also had shrimp tempura. So it was just like there was always something else in it that would happen to be cooked or Uh it wasn't raw. So I couldn't just get just a roll of just raw fish. Oh, hmm. 
Maybe I'm gonna have sushi for lunch. <laughs> I can have sushi just. I had I had um pokey for lunch yesterday. Oh, you did sushi mm. in a bowl. <laughs> huh? Yeah, sushi like in a bowl. deconstructed sushi. <laughs> it was like a uh, there's a pop like a pop up sort of space uh-huh. in Stockbridge called Space at Seventeen, and the the thing that's been there for the last month is mana sushi bowls. So I had the spicy one, but it had like. A pineapple salsa in it as well, which is interesting, mm-hmm. but pretty tasty. Mm, sounds yummy. Can't be. Um, <laughs> as long as there's no cream cheese in it, I do not want cream cheese in my sushi. Or in no, my rolls. me neither. I think it's just, I don't know, cream cheese and rice. <laughs> cream cheese and seaweed? I just, like, I don't know. It just Cream cheese just, just, just does not belong in Asian food. It doesn't do it. Okay, what's next? Whips. Whips. Mm-hmm. What you got? On your hooks. So, as part of the Archive Cal, which is still going on, and it's still going on until April 24th, and for any new listeners, it's a crochet slash knit along that we're hosting, and it's called the Archive Cal because the idea is that you go through your pattern archives and you find a pattern that's been just sitting there that you've been want, meaning to make for a while, but you just haven't gotten around to making it, and it's just a way to push ourselves to actually just do it. Uh, mm-hmm. So, the thing that I'm making is the chain reaction afghan, and I'm just doing um, half of the squares to make a sort of lap blanket. Um, well, I finished one block, uh, another the second block, uh, and that was the woven arrowheads that I talked about last week. Yeah, I really and like that. It's cool. Yeah, it's really cool, but I, I just you really had fiddly. to I, I had to con- yeah it was fiddly. I, I had to concentrate like you couldn't just get used to the pattern really, mm-hmm. and even I don't know, so I was, I was kind of glad when it was over, but. Uh, yeah, you, so. you definitely can't do that in a dark movie theater. No, absolutely. Not. <laughs> um, the back looks pretty too, actually. Yeah, the back. I mean, the back. If you were just trying to achieve the back, it would have been a lot mm-hmm. easier. It's just <laughs> sort of like color, like a tapestry, I guess. But the, because the front, yeah, uh, you do the chains, and then the chains you have to you chain in one color, drop that color, pick up the, the other color, do some stitches, do some chains drop that, pick up the other chains, and then, yep. So it was, yeah, very fiddly. So the third square that I've started is the Tunisian Cables, and that square is by Angela Grabowski. And yeah, so it's Tunisian crochet, but cables. And oh, that's cool. Yeah, so... That looks just as fiddly, actually. But I think it's it's easier to remember what's going on and just to skim the pattern for oh, just... While I might not memorize the exact, the whole entire pattern, I can just look at which row I'm on. I'm like, okay, so for this cable, I have to do it's front, front, back, or back, back, front. So first thing, sorry, I've never done Tunisian with such thick yarn, so it's it like works up pretty fast. Oh. Um, unlike the the lace shawl that I'm working on, <laughs> um, and also I've done quite a, like a few Tunisian projects recently, but they've all pretty much been in like the simple stitch. So mm-hmm. I've never done anything more complicated than simple stitch, knit stitch, yarn over, skip stitches, you know. So this is a lot different than anything I've ever done with the cables. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, it's really interesting. And I had to, they sort of explain the idea of how to do the cables in the pattern, but because it's like a free pattern and I don't think there was like, and all the different um, blocks are designed by somebody else. Mm-hmm. The quality of each pattern in terms of writing it up isn't the same so Mm. i don't think it explained really well how to do the cables if you've never done it but what you do is you once you get to the cable so you've got the tunisian stitches that are being worked up on your on your hook i've got a cable i've got a cable because it's Uh long Uh and you take a second hook which doesn't have a cable and you work a few stitches on that hook and then depending on which direction your cable is going you then on the back yeah, put it to the front or the back, and then this continue. It's like knitting working. cables, and then oh, is that how you do it? And then you put the stitches back on. Uh, basically, yes. Okay, so I I I wouldn't have known that at all. So it's good with the interchangeables as well because it the hook taper is quite thin to the end, so that's easy uh-huh. to slide it off of that hook onto the uh, original hook. Uh huh. Um, it sounds yeah, it definitely sounds more complicated than knitting cables because knitting cables you can have like a a cable needle is just a short little mm-hmm. needle it's either yeah. sometimes it's, there's a hump in it or sometimes it's like a u uh-huh. and then you get to where you need to cable and then you put your cabled your stitches on the 
on the cable needle and you either bring it to the front or bring it to the back Mm -hmm. and then you like knit off of the piece two stitches three stitches whatever and and then you take the cabled the stitches on the cable needle and put it back on the the left that sounds the same work that does not sound the same yeah but i don't um you don't yeah i mean i guess it does sound the same but i can actually do that without a cable needle i can just Uh. just do like slip it and then knit the ones Uh on the left uh-huh. And then you, you kind of like slip it back. So I don't actually need another. Okay. I guess I suppose you could probably do that with a. I think you might be able to do the cables without, without a, a separate a cable needle. Because when I was, yeah, when, I, or not needle, hook. Because when I was just like briefly Googling, I didn't understand what they meant. Uh huh. I saw one video and it looked like they didn't have a. Oh, so I don't know if they just skipped hook. the stitches. Uh huh. And then were, went back to oh, them wow. or something. I, oh, I, I'm wow. not sure. What? Because I, I remember looking at cabled sweaters. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was a child, I knew I knew the basic knit and purl stitches, and I was yeah. asking my mom, "How do you do those braids?" And she's uh-huh. like, "Oh, you just take them and you swap them, and then I'm like," and I was like, "Oh, it's like because because the fact that you can actually take take the live stitches off mm-hmm. and put it somewhere else and just like <laughs> save yeah. it and then like yeah. twist it, I was like, that sounds like magic." <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, I haven't been really precious about it because there's three cables on the block. Haven't been really what about it? Precious about it. There's oh. three cables and then there's a just a sort of, it's almost like a very small basket where you just do simple and knit stitch interchanged. And I definitely have been messing that bit up, but I just carried on because I think if, unless you're looking for it, you don't necessarily see it. As well, I started doing it I did, I even did the swatch for it, mm-hmm. the gauge swatch. I was like, oh no, it's fine, it's perfect. I went down half a needle size, uh, uh, a hook size, and then started to do the whole thing. And it was so big. And then I remembered, oh, I'm not making 12 inch blocks anyway, I'm making 11 inch blocks. Uh, so I've taken off some stitches, but now it's like, it's ending up more like 10 inches instead of 11 inches. Because I think as you're going, it is kind of shrinking with the way the. Uh. The cables the are cables, sort of sucking it they in. Pull, yeah. They pull it in, yeah. So Which I figured it must do that because even for it to have been 12 inches with the gauge they gave you, uh-huh. if you weren't doing cables, it would have been like 14 inches wide. <laughs> so it's like, well, something must happen in the process. <laughs> so I've taken off slightly too many stitches, but I, I can just, you know, do a couple of borders or, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. Rows around the edge to do a border. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wait, how many blocks are you doing? I'm going to do... 10 so at this rate i don't know i'm gonna finish it by the end. <laughs> <laughs> but i'm trying <laughs> uh, yeah i'm so my whips i haven't really gotten that far on my endless rose cowl mm-hmm. and there's a stupid reason for that did you have the to rip s- back no i didn't have to rip anything back i mean i did i did get it it's a little bit bigger than it was last time but it's uh-huh. you know it's only been a week a pair, pretty narrow cowl it goes like this. Yeah. It's okay, tight, it looks less like, narrow when you're holding it up. It's, you know, it's one of those around the neck. It's not, it doesn't go this way. It doesn't, you don't, you don't. Yeah, put your yeah, hand. no, no, I, I know, I know. Yeah, you're doing, it's like double layer. My, so, because the pattern is from an old magazine, I just photocopied the chart and I stick it in my bag and I was using highlighter tape mm-hmm. to say, you know, to highlight wh- which row I'm at. Yeah. And my highlighter tape fell off. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I didn't have any highlighter tape with me wherever the heck I was, where I had my knitting, you know, I was traveling with my knitting. And mm. and I just couldn't be bothered to figure out where I was. And I was like, even if I do figure out where I am, I don't have any highlighter tape to save it. <laughs> so I was like, uh-huh. screw it. So I threw it back in the bag and I just like, I didn't touch it for like days. Uh, so... <laughs> It's like you know, it doesn't it doesn't take a lot sometimes to get mad at your knitting. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I have been working on my sinister cardigan, and I actually got quite a bit. Wait, of Wait, hold done. on. Just just one comment. I saw the photo of the swatch that you made, and mm, there's something wrong with the cats. I know they have <laughs> yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it doesn't have eyes. It has like one single oblong eye. <laughs> 
I know. I read the chart wrong, and then I was like, I'm not flipping back to just to f- f- fix the eyes. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looks, looks, looks like they have unibrows. <laughs> yeah. And no eyes. And no eyes. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Carry on. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I am I have maybe three more rows before I start the color work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it looks good. Nice. Thank you. So, oh, yeah, I don't... Did you talk about what colors you were going to do it in? Yeah, pink, white, and a charcoal gray. So... <laughs> Because this this sweater is going to an eighteen year old college student, mm-hmm. I didn't want to. Who doesn't really wear pink? I thought she requested the pink. Mm. She does wear some pink. Okay. I didn't want to use like really nice yarn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. I mean, but the colors are beautiful. The uh-huh. the knit picks are like hand dyed or kettle dyed or something sock yarn. Mm-hmm. So and because so the cardigan is pink. The, the yoke is pink. Just the, the, the yoke. Just the, the yoke, yoke is pink. Okay. Yeah. And then and the then, bottom and is gray? The, and then the cats, and the, yes, the bottom is thick charcoal. And it's not quite as dark as my navy blue sweater. So that's good. Okay. I can see it. Yeah. But anyway, getting back to the college student. Yes. So I'm using this uh, Knit Picks Stroll sock yarn. And that is 75% merino, superwash merino, and 25% nylon. And this this sweater, this sweater pattern is calls for it to be knit in the round and steeked down the middle. Uh huh. And I wasn't sure if that yarn would have enough grip to steek properly. Grip? Because usually when you steek a sweater, you cut you you know you're cutting it. Yeah. Uh huh. And um and it's usually recommended not to use superwash because when you cut it and then you fold the hem over, you want it to be sticky, like it'll like felt uh-huh. a little bit so that yeah. the, the stitches won't start running away with you. Uh-huh. And I wasn't sure about this, so I decided to knit it flat without the steek. So I had to take the steek stitches out because there's usually uh, like waist stitches that you reserve for the steeking, like five stitches or seven stitches. Yeah. Usually uh-huh. it's an uneven number. So I haven't gotten to the color work part yet, but I know once I get to the color work part and I have to do it flat, I'm going to be going. Arr, 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 arr. Yeah. How, how... <laughs> <laughs> I am so, not going to like this. So are you able to pretty much just like other than taking away the, the stitches where you would have been seeking it are you basically able to follow the pattern though like, yeah i just way... have to instead of all you know you have to purl back that... yeah i guess that's the beauty of, of knitting versus crocheting because you can't really do that they look looks too different whether you do it flat or in the round oh really because the I back of the so. stitches looks different than the front like whereas like Oh, right, because yeah. if you, so cause if if you go knit, back then it looks forth. like a pearl on the other side. If you pearl, yeah, yeah. Uh. So if you go back and forth, then flat, then every other row is a back. Is you know, yeah, it'll, it'll have that that ridge. Will it have like? Is it ridgier than if you? Yeah, do yeah, it has a yeah. sort of ridge. Yeah. It might depend on the stitches, but yeah, it definitely looks different. I see. So, so I'm sure next episode I'll be complaining. <laughs> for, for now, I'm not complaining because it's just stocking it, and I did all my increases, and I have to uh, like knit straight stocking it for I don't know ten rounds or something like that before I start the color work. So once I start the color work, there's gonna be uh, fireworks going off. <laughs> <laughs> not the good kind. <laughs> not the good kind. The angry kind. <laughs> yeah, but it's it'll turn out fine and i i do like this yarn it's it's pretty soft and the uh the pink i mean the the white and the gray is not a hand dyed or it's not a it's you know it's this is it's called just nitpick solid. stroll tonal yeah it's just solid so yeah it is it is hand dyed or if it's not hand dyed i mean the the website says it's hand dyed if it's not hand dyed it's made to look like it's hand dyed yeah so i actually so what color are the cats going to be gray the cats will be white white with with black um gray outlines and stuff yeah with the uh, gray outlines but i think i'm gonna do uh, two cats like random In- ones that are black to be sushi and will it yeah mm. is there anything else you can do to identify them as sushi and will it i can really. do, do a white freckle the, or for will it next to the nose i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cute i mean even if you don't do that if you just have the two uh-huh. random black cats that'd be cute yeah so bad i can't put polly in there Make a pink cat for Polly. <laughs> mm. I mean, do you have any? You must have some sort of scrap. Oh no, wait. Yeah, how would you? If you're doing it, <laughs> I can't, this is this is words. If you're doing it back flat, uh-huh. uh huh. Uh, and you just have the two because ra- wait, 
normally, if you're just working the white and the gray, uh-huh. you have you would like float the yarns, yeah. Yes. In uh-huh. the back, but if you have if you now are introducing a third black, but you're doing it back and forth, can you just leave that black yarn hanging? Like, because you wouldn't float. Would you? Fl- you would float the white in the back into the black. No, but like what once like once you because you have like white cat, white cat, white cat, black cat. So you have to introduce the black yarn, but then you go back to a white cat. So what do you do with the yarn once you're but done with you're, that? You're using the black or the gray as the outline. So you have gray. Oh, you're using the, the gray as the black cat. Yeah. Gotcha. Got yeah. yeah, we're good. All right. right. I'm not going to uh-huh. actually use black cat, am I? Should I actually do a black cat? I don't know. Uh, no. I just, in my head, that's that. But yeah, you know, gray. gray I mean, the gray is like, it, it looks kind of black, right? Next to the pink and the white. It'll yeah, it's, it's dark enough. It's dark. Um, but if you yeah, did, was, so say say get... if you had like a beige yarn to use as poly, uh-huh. could you do that, or would that be too complicated? I would probably uh, duplicate stitch, like do it afterwards. Uh huh. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't I mean, really know what that means, but kind of. Makes but sense. but the the beauty of doing it flat is that I wouldn't have to carry like if I were to do it in place instead of duplicate stitching it, I wouldn't have to carry that brown. All the way around. I yeah, I think that, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, you just leave flat. it and then pick it up once you're doing the re- the backside. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So that's what yeah. I was trying to say about the black. Except in my head, the black was a third color, not the gray. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I could do black. I mean, I, I'm sure I have black yarn somewhere. Yeah, you must have some scrap. Actually, I don't know. I I'm going to say buy that. But... Black yarn. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> I'd have to buy it separately. Also, just to go back to the fact that you're saying you're not using as nice yarn, you're still using pre nice yarn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's <laughs> not like it's not like you know, like indie dyed or you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I meant. It's still nice yarn. Yes. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's it is um, merino. Yeah. I mean, it is superwash, but merino. And um, I have knit other sort of. I mean, my sock arms was made with stroll knit picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, do you have any fos? I don't think no, either and of you us don't have either. Any. Do you? Nope. It's because it's only been a week. It's just it's not been, been, been enough time. No, um, but you have a whole lot, whole whole bunch of uh, of uh, yarny bits and bobs. I do have a lot of yarny bits and bobs, and I I feel bad because I feel like it's just gonna be me talking for the next twenty minutes. <laughs> and this and that and this. Uh, but I was at Unravel this past weekend, mm-hmm. like a week ago. Uh, the official name of the festival is Unravel. Dot dot dot. A festival of yarn. Um, <laughs> it's it's in Sussex. Dot. It's in uh in a little town called Farnham, which is, I think it's got like quite a lot of history. There's like a castle keep there that you can visit, but I, I didn't have time to. And it's just a really really cute town. The show itself is in Farnham Maltings, which is a sort of arts venue. So I think they have like a a stage to do like theater and other shows, and they have other different festivals, including this yarn festival. So I went because I was part of the BIPOC and fiber team. We were exhibiting at the show. The website still hasn't launched, so it was more an opportunity to get people to sign up to the newsletter, but also just to spread the word, to have some conversations in real life with people about the project and about their thoughts on diversity and the fiber community and blah, blah. And we were selling some of our uh, enamel pins and tote bags and stuff. And that was a cool experience because I've never done anything like that in terms of exhibiting at a show or anything and I think I really fine-tuned my sort of pitch on what is BIPOC and fiber which was helpful. So explain to our new listeners what is BIPOC and fiber. Yeah. Oh, so Do your you pitch. Ship, <laughs> Do prove your pitch. it. Uh, so BIPOC <laughs> and fiber is a project founded by Jeanette Sloan who is a black British knitwear designer. We like to say she's Britain's most prominent black knitwear designer, but she blushes too much when when you say that in front of her. (laughs) Um, And uh, a while ago, maybe uh, a year and a half ago or something like that, she had written an article for one of the knitting magazines called Black People Do Knit, and where she was talking about... uh, That was the name of her article, not the name of the... Yeah, that was the name of the article um, in which she was talking about diversity in the knitting specifically community uh and she was prompted to write that because a Lorna Hamilton Brown had contacted her previously about her dissertation which was titled myth black people don't knit and 
the title of that dissertation came from the fact that Lorna had been at a academic knitting conference and she was told by a white academic that black people don't knit, they crochet. Never mind the fact that Lorna is a black knitter. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that sort of between the two of them, Lorna and Jeanette, uh, started a conversation um, between those them about diversity within the knitting community because um they got yeah. mad. <laughs> yeah, well, because Lorna, <laughs> as part of her dissertation, wanted to speak to black knitwear designers, and at the time, I don't know if it was her advisor or whoever had suggested Jeanette, but they couldn't. Jeanette even couldn't think of any other black knitwear designers other than Shirley Payton, who's an American designer and uh-huh. like really big. And so it was just sort of that moment of, well, this is ridiculous. Like, of course, you know, I slash Jeanette isn't the only black network designer in, in the UK. Where are they? So the project is, um, our mission is to make the fiber industry as diverse as the community it serves. So we know that the community of knitters is really diverse, but we want that diversity to be reflected within the industry. So that's you know, your professional knitwear designers, crochet designers, magazine editors, and all that sort of thing. So the website is going to have a directory of BIPOC, that's Black, Indigenous, and People of Color, working within the fiber industry. And then that directory will be searchable by, well, everyone, because it'll be um, public on the website. Yay. So it'll have profiles of different people. Um, and yeah, so I, that that's what BIPOC and fiber is. And that's why I was at Unravel. And you're going to have to add yourself in there. Because you're not designing. Yeah, I've got, a, well, I'm also a, you know, we are uh-huh. podcasters, podcasters. So yeah. that's our, our other in into the industry. Uh-huh. Um, and the, because the, the, the directory, you know, it, it, we are trying to cover all sort of aspects of how you might be involved. So spinners and weavers and tutors, if you teach, uh, if you write about like it for craft magazines or knitting magazines, all that sort of thing. Bloggers. Uh-huh. But I also had opportunity to just enjoy the show, which is nice. The show itself is, I really liked it. The venue is a bit of a maze. So unlike Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which is just in one massive big room, essentially, Uh um, there was like two and a half different, like there were different floors, different rooms. On my first go around, I came back and realized, oh, I've missed a room. And then on my second go around, I went to that room, came back. And, th- and then thought, okay, I've I've now visited all the rooms. And then on my third go around, I found another room that I hadn't <laughs> like I missed the, the first few times. So, so yeah. So one of the things that I knew I wanted to get was yarn in the colors of BIPOC and fibers sort of branding. Logo. So oh, okay. yeah, logo. So we we use like a hot pink and an orange. And I don't well currently I'm sat here wearing a pink <laughs> jumper, but I don't really wear this. I, this is kind of like my home sweater it's um, coral and pink yeah it's like coral you and wear pink. coral there's, though. there's a bit of hot pink at the bottom i, oh, I, I these days i really don't wear a lot of color i wear a lot well, of you used to wear a lot of coral yeah i did used to but i, I really don't you anymore, don't anymore. <laughs> okay, fine. um so whenever the bipoc and fiber team gets together everyone else has like a bit like their hot pink things or their orange things like <laughs> uh-huh. orange tights and dresses and jumpers and <laughs> shawls and i have nothing so <laughs> You I can now wear need that something. sweater that you're wearing right now. I could do, but it's not like, you know, I don't have any... It's not handmade. Ha- yeah, handmade thing. So I wanted to buy some yarn in the colors so I could make something. I haven't decided what I'm going to make yet. But Ooh, sparkly. So the, first, the first thing I got was a pink, hot pink and orange. So it's pretty much perfect. Hand-dyed. Uh, mohair. It's, it's not, so it looks, it's one of those that looks like mohair, but it's alpaca. Oh. So it's, it's softer and cheaper. <laughs> um, uh, but it's alpaca silk alpaca and silk lace weight and yeah so it's it's uh how do you describe this I, I i don't know why i can ever variegated is it variegated or is it well it's hand dyed yeah hand dyed variegated yeah so in the colors and then so i got that and then just thought well i'll get a hot pink to go with it and so yeah so i got one that's got selena in it a hot pink from sorry the the alpaca is from easy knits and then I got picked up two skeins of a hot pink from Debonair, and that's hand dyed as well. It's their Shimmer Sock Four Ply, uh, Superwash Merino and Nylon, and Silver Stellina. Uh, and I just I sort of looked at it and thought I I, I would never make anything sparkly. 
but I'm already making something in colors that I would never wear anyway. So I'm just going to go all out and just, just go crazy. So sparkly hot Yeah, pink. but any of that stuff would go with like the, the blacks and the grays that you wear. So that's fine. Not not the mustards, though, probably. Mm-hmm. I think no, that's the one. Not or mustard. not mustard, like browns. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I bought that yarn. And then that's the only yarn I bought. And in my mind, that was all I was going to buy. I was like, just going to buy yarn. <laughs> and it just wasn't true. Uh, in fact, the first thing that I bought wasn't yarn. So there is a artist, Selena Jane. Uh, she said, came and said hello at our the BIPOC and Fiber table. But oh, she's, okay. a, she's an illustrator, printmaker. And so she had a, a table and she had this mug. And it was just too funny. And I had to get it. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's an illustration of two women at a bar and they're knitting. And one of the women is saying, personally, I love a good fingering. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's a picture of a man who's just got his beers from the bar. And he, he's <laughs> shocked. Um, but yeah, so that was just too funny. I had to get it. You'd have to take a picture of that. <laughs> uh, so I got that from <laughs> Selena, uh, and she sells those online as well. I got a project bag from the woman's name is Valerie Valerie Ng. She's originally from Hong Kong, but she lives in Utrecht in Amsterdam. So she was selling her bags at Cross in Woods is stand in their uh, yarn and fabric store in The Hague in uh-huh. Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, so I spoke to her about her bags, and they were just so good. Somebody, <laughs> and this was again, somebody had come up to the BIPOC and fiber table, and I was just asking her, oh, what have you bought? And it was another Asian woman, and she had pulled out one of these bags, and I was like, oh my god, that's, I love it. <laughs> and then I was talking to Valerie, and so she sells her bags under uh, the name Joyance Fiber Arts. And I was just like, your bags are so amazing, and my mom makes project bags, but mo- like pretty much all my project bags are made by my mom, but so if I buy something that's not made by my mom, then, or if I have something not made by my mom, because I've never actually bought anything from you, uh, <laughs> it has to be really, really special. So your bags are really special. Uh, so it's, she calls it a singlet bag. I think because the shape of it looks like a tank top or a singlet. She's called it a what? A singlet? A singlet. So that's what, I'm sure, I don't know if English people say that, but I think definitely Australian people would call like a, like a tank top like this. A singlet, because uh, uh-huh. uh, there's so there's no there's seams on the sides and uh-huh. the bottom, but in terms of like the handle, yep, I see. So it's the ba- all, it's like integrated into yeah, it's all it's just it's one body. piece, uh-huh. and so so it's got the short handles, and like uh-huh. yours, it's got the it's, the top with a cinch yep. and pockets on the inside. So it's quite similar to yours, but just like different fabrics and slightly different construction. Is it like a like quilting cotton or is it more it's, of an upholstery? I think it's cotton and polyester. Uh, uh, I think she describes it as a linen look, uh-huh. but it's the one thing that she was saying that she likes to do is she'll, if she's traveling or something and is concerned about the the outside fabric, she'll turn it completely inside out, tuck in the handles, and then oh, it's just a bag of that's pouch cute. like that. Uh-huh. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I had a, a nice little chat with her, and it turns out I must have met her very briefly at Vogue Knitting because I had her business card in my Vogue Knitting pile. Oh, so, did you tell and, her that? Yeah, yeah. I messaged her. I was like, were you at Vogue Knitting? <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously, I don't think we must. I think she must have just stopped by really quickly. Uh, and then the last thing I got was just a very special purchase. It is a sterling silver little uh, crochet hook on a on a ring. So it's like a pendant sort of ring. Um, and that's by Lynn Roberts Design. I've definitely seen her other shows. She sells, yeah, sterling silver crochet hooks and knitting needles and she does dpns but she also does interchangeables that you can use with like oh really knit picks cables yeah uh-huh. um and as well as like jewelry and shawl pins and buttons stitch markers but so these ones she sells as um well pickup hooks but i i, I was saying like i don't i don't knit so it, this is just <laughs> jewelry for me because i think it'd be pretty hard to try and crochet with it it's only about <laughs> two inches long maybe <laughs> Does she have any, uh, like you know how some people have like knitting gauge jewelry or or, or needle yeah, gauge I jewelry? Yeah, I think I think she might have. She also had, which I think are fairly new, row uh, counters. 
with the wheels. Oh, okay. You know what I mean, yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah, so it's like, there's two wheels to count your rows, but it's they're like upside down, so you can like look down at it and wear it as oh. like a pendant. Oh, cool. And I think they had like leaves or something etched on the outside, which is nice. And then the the hooks, they just they all have sort of different ringed mark. Like mine has just two etched rings around the top. Oh, cool. But I like it because it's it's really like simple. So if I wear it as a as a pendant and a necklace, uh-huh. you'd really have to look at it or like be a crocheter to be like, hey, that's a crochet <laughs> hook. It's kind of cool. It is cool. Uh, the other thing I did while I was at Unravel was I went to one of the talks because. You know, this book that I was reading slash talking yep. about on one of our episodes, This Golden uh-huh. Fleece, A Journey Through Britain's Knitted History by Esther Rudder. She, she was, was out on Ravel. Mm-hmm. So and she had a talk and I brought my book with me. Or I happened to have the book with me. Did you know that she was going to be there? I only knew like the day before. So you were able much. to pre, pre. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it sort of reminded me that. I've, I've been meaning to read more of the book, but I just kind of stopped in the middle of chapter two. And uh-huh. I don't know if you remember, but when I bought the book, it happened to be a signed copy. Uh-huh. Um, so I also got her to put a little uh, dedication in it as well. Uh-huh. So it's double signed now. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was really cool to see her talk because so the whole idea with the book is she took a year off and she made 12 different garments in that year. And then the wow. idea being that... Uh, E- each of those lot. garments, yeah, she explored the history. Are they the all like full sized? <laughs> uh, no, like one of them's like a like a hat, like the. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, what? Yeah. Well, that's not a garment. Twelve items. Clothing of clothing, I think. Okay. I don't think any of them weren't like there weren't any like tea cozies or anything like that. Uh huh. Um, but it was, she she had them all with her, so it was cool to to see them in person and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, so I'll do. I finally finally finished chapter two, so. I'll just do some sh- some sharing with you, will I? A little book club. Okay. So chapter two was called Proper Gansies. And, I mean, you could explain what a Gansy is, probably. It is a sweater uh, that is, um, it's, most, it's like all knits and pearls to, to make a, I mean, it's, it's a style of sweater, and it's all knits and pearls for the patterning. There's no cables. Yeah. So they're tra- traditionally fishermen's jumpers and they're really heavy and dense uh-huh. and tightly knitted so that it uh-huh. sort of repels water uh-huh. so, it's and so they were usually made in navy but not necessarily always uh, i like this quote she said traditional handmade gansies were made to measure to fit the man who wore them mirroring the bend of their back and the swell of their stomach <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in for her sort of her journey she decides to make a gansy for her father uh-huh. Um, and I think traditionally they sort of come mostly from from Scotland and the East Coast. Oh, um, okay. but anyway, I thought they were Irish. I guess not. Okay. You know? But yeah, so like you mentioned, the the pattern. So they're all different. They've got like different patterns and stuff. She talks about how. So if you were to think of a a knitted cable jumper, what kind oh. of stitch would you imagine would be like the background to the cables? It either. Either a uh, reverse stockinette or a moss stitch. Okay, so usually. she talks about how Scottish gansies are usually made with a moss stitch as the background to its cables. Uh-huh. But but I think she mentioned as opposed oh, to so curls. wait they do have they do have um they well they they might have cables, cables? but not necessarily. so I thought it so was so, a thing so that some gans- of them have cables some of them have to list, like she talks about like the different motifs and designs that might have been used and there's this whole idea that the patterns were regional or really specific to an individual uh-huh. so that like you know if they died at sea that their bodies could be identified by their lo- loved ones yeah. but actually that's probably completely not true um, <laughs> partially because if they died at sea they probably like the, the they wouldn't the get the bodies no yeah they wouldn't get <laughs> the bodies back so and as well the the patterns the are keep- not that unique yeah, like I think she talks about like certain patterns being called something in one area, but maybe found in a different area with a different name. And and I think you know pre pre globalization and internet, like you know these things happen. Like as she talks about the the herring trade, uh, especially meant that people were families, especially Scottish families, were traveling all around the country the way the herrings migrated to follow uh-huh. the herring fishing. So they were bringing about 
different patterns to different areas of the country and, and you know stories of women following men in their jumpers because they might have seen a pattern they liked on his jumper and just like, oh, <laughs> trying to figure out what that was um and <laughs> there was a funny story she's talking because she's talking about obviously with the men wearing the jumpers but it was mostly women who were who were making the jumpers and but the women were also involved in the the fishing trade at first with um something to do with like line, hooking the lines or whatever um and okay. later she talks about fisher lassies piggybacking their men to their boat so the men would stay dry so the women would piggyback their men uh-huh. to take them to the boats so that the men could stay dry on the boats uh-huh so rather you know like there wouldn't be a dock yeah. or something like and it was just I a see. bit further yeah <laughs> Yeah, it would depend on how big the man is, right? Those men are pretty big. The wife has to be pretty stout to be able to back. Well, I mean, I could piggyback your dad, but he's, you know, on the smaller side. (laughs) Um. Uh, But I certainly couldn't piggyback my brother. (laughs) Can you imagine that? (laughs) Yeah. Well, he has quite the swell of his stomach. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, uh, but yeah, and so she bought the jumper that she had made for her her dad, and uh-huh. um, I think the idea was to do one knitted piece per month, but uh, that one obviously took quite a long time. But she finished uh-huh. it before the end of the year, at least. And uh-huh. she talks about like she did a some sort of like railroad track motif to symbolize his father's vocation and um his initials as some of the Gansies had initials of the man who wore them as well uh, as the, a number for the number of that. children they had. So you have to change that if you had more children. Oh, <laughs> speaking of and that, that was something she was talking about how like the um the sort of the lower arms and the, the bottom torso bits might be done in just like plain stitches because those they the would tuck it in. Get, well, no, because those are the bits that might get worn out and then could be replaced oh, or redone or yeah. And without oh. like um Oh, well, was it so? The did they do? Did they knit it in the round then? Yeah, so the, so they were seamless because uh, the seam from the top down. I don't I don't bottom? know, but but seamless because um oh what is she, she called it something? But because the seams, if they got like they would one maybe leave let water in, but as well if they start to to chafe. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh yeah. Oh, here it is. Uh, <laughs> they might get sea boils where the skin is rubbed. Oh. Uh-huh sounds lovely because you didn't have polyester fleece back then yeah so i'll keep you posted on the the next two chapters i read yeah yeah that's very interesting uh, do you have any anything you want to share after my uh, my mouth is like dry now from all the time uh no because it's only been a week <laughs> <laughs> for us i mean will it be longer for our listeners uh, yeah uh, by the time like we get this out no, I don't have anything, nothing in the shop that's new because I already have new stuff in the shop. But I am mm-hmm. still making those pallet bags. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I don't know if, if anyone noticed, but Keep Calm and Carry Yarn podcast has gone through a ever a slight makeover. We've got a, a new logo. Yeah. Um, it's still a, a, a microphone, but it's just a little bit different. And if you're watching the video version of this, I've like done up the... The graphics, a the bit. graphics, yeah. So they're a bit yeah. different, and the logo is still in my c- the colors that I like. <laughs> yeah, and the blues. Oh, even and... though you tried to change it. <laughs> yeah, we just stuck to the blue and blue. <laughs> Actually, the the mug that we had done for the giveaway that's got the new logo on it. Yeah. Um and oh, I know what else. So before in the old videos to. Sometimes I would show like who was talking, and it would be mm-hmm. like a picture, like a, a map, and then it would be our pictures. Uh-huh. You and Virginia, that was me, my idea. Scotland. That was your uh-huh. idea, and it went through a couple <laughs> different versions, did a couple different uh-huh. colored versions, and I had to change it when you moved New Hampshire and everything. But now we've got little speech bubbles with like little like dot 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 talking type, yeah. like like when you're type, <laughs> typing a text message. Uh-huh. And the speed, the dot dot dots are your balls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're really balls. cute. <laughs> we'll have to get like a like a summer version of our uh of, that picture. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. Okay. Cool. Um well is that it then? Yep, that's it. Okay. Well, you can find the show notes which has pictures of everything that we're talking about on our website which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com you can also follow us on instagram at kcacypodcast 
my personal Instagram is Allison here. My mom's personal Instagram is upstate underscore Viv. And you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, on YouTube, on Spotify, on Stitcher, on Acast, on wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also join our Ravelry group. Just search for Keep Calm and Carry On podcast in the groups tabs. And we've got a thread there for the archive cow so you can chat along with us or you can use hashtag archive cow that's k-c-a-l knitting and crocheting cow on instagram so thank you for listening and remember to keep calm and carry on